Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Foundation Level Certification. We are in Chapter 5 talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with 5.3 that is the test monitoring, test control and test completion. And as a part of today's tutorial, we'll be talking about the test reports, what we use in testing lifecycle. When it comes to test reporting in testing lifecycle, it becomes very crucial as one of the objective of testing also says that it is our responsibility to consistently share the information with other stakeholders to let them know how the testing is progressing and sometime what support, what inputs, what action items we need to adhere to when it comes to the overall project management. Not others so much, but testing certainly being the last activity in the life cycle becomes very important for all the stakeholders that how exactly testing is progressing and what are the other things what we need to take care of. And in that context, we do create reports and share with our stakeholders. In this particular tutorial, we will not just be understanding that what are the reports we have, what are the content of the report, but also we'll understand why we should write a report who is our target audience and how exactly that drives the overall content of the report altogether. First of all, we want to let you know that we have two types of report in testing lifecycle. One is test progress report and second is test summary report. And uh, when we talk about the test uh, summary report, it is more of like the overall release or overall project, whereas test progress report is something which has the similar content to that of the test summary report, but being created several times during the life cycle. So it's not that it's created only once, but it just gets created several times. So for example, if I have to uh, talk about agile methodology, then in agile methodology, every single sprint will have a test progress report at the end of it. Whereas collection of sprints, which is a release, may have a test summary report. Now also to add test summary report, in many organizations are also called as test completion report and not these reports are very very standardized however ieee and other standards do have a template for it if you want you can refer them but organizations have the complete freedom to define based on your stoic stakeholder and business needs that what should be the content of your reports so let's quickly have a look on what exactly the test progress report would consist of and then we'll talk about the test completion as well so number one, when we talk about test reporting, is basically summarizes and communicates the test information during and after the testing. The test progress reports support the ongoing control of the testing and must provide enough information to make modification to the test schedule, resources, or test plan when such changes are needed due to deviations from the plan or change circumstances. The test completion report, however, summarizes a specific stage of testing, which includes can be for test level, test cycle, or a particular iteration, or maybe uh, entire release or even a project, and can give information for subsequent testing, which is being planned for the upcoming cycles. During test monitoring and control, the test team generates test progress reports for stakeholders to keep them informed. The test progress reports are usually generated on a regular basis, which can be daily, weekly, etc., and can include the following. That is the test period, the duration, what you're talking about, the test progress made so far, like are you ahead of the schedule, on schedule or behind the schedule, including any notable deviations, impediments for testing and their workaround, which is more of like the blockers, what you may have on the way and what exactly did you do in order to overcome that or what are the workarounds referred for it. Also to add test matrices of different things, be it about test cases, be it about defects, risk, coverage, you must include all the measurements what you have done during that particular period to let everyone understand what exactly the progress you have made so far. And also to talk about the new and change risk within the testing period as we discussed in our previous uh, segment 5.2 that risks are not something which can be only analyzed once in the beginning of the project. Down the line, it is a consistent activity to keep an eye on emerging risk as the product evolves. Thus, you may talk about all those risks which might have involved uh, over a period of time and include them into the test report as well. And finally, we do include testing plan for the next period, which means it is a test progress report. So you might be talking only about the sprint one completion, but at the same time, you can reflect that what are your plan of actions or plan of testing for the sprint two. 
So on a very high level, Test Progress Reports provides all that information, what someone might be interested in for that particular period, what you have performed so far. Okay. And similarly, it will have more information for test completion report. So just let's have a look on it. Well, when it comes to test completion report, as we told you, it's more of a, like a bigger milestone compared to that of test progress report or could be done even at the end of the project or end of the release as well. So here the test completion report is prepared during test completion when a project test level or test type is complete and when ideally its exit criteria have met. Also, this report uses test progress reports and other data. Now, typical test completion reports include the test summary altogether about that particular long duration, then testing and product quality evaluation based on the original test plan. That means how much, how many objectives what you defined has been met or how many exit criteria were actually fulfilled or have you really fulfilled all the exit criteria or not. Also to add here, deviation from the test plan, if any, which can be related to differences from the plan schedule, duration, effort, cost, etc. Testing impediments and workaround, which is same as that of the test progress report. Same way the matrices based on progress reports. Unmitigated risk, now the element changes here because uh, we spoke about emerging risk in the test progress report. But in completion report, as we are completing a project or maybe a release, we are talking about the risk which we could not mitigate and also to add the defects which were not fixed. The defects not fixed are, in simple words, those defects which remain unresolved or we declare them as known defects and we look forward to fix them later in upcoming versions or maintenance. So that's where these things will also be identified or listed as a part of the test completion report. Plus, when we come to lessons learned that are relevant to testing, uh, this could be a little controversial to discuss because not everyone really declares that what improvements we made or what kind of mistakes we have done. So not generally can be a part of it, but in order to showcase that how you have matured yourself during this project in order to improve the quality, certainly you can involve that into your test completion report. So not all the silly mistakes what you have performed, but the things what helps you grow into your own industry can certainly be specified as a part of test completion. This also encourages the business to come back to you and help you to get another project or work continuously with you. So test completion reports certainly consist of all this information, but on top of it, what is the purpose and what are your stakeholders' decisions when it comes to reports? So when it comes to the stakeholders, of course, different audience require different information in the reports and influences the degree of formality and the frequency of reporting. So in simple words, the frequency, that means how frequently the report must be created, will be defined by your target audience and the level of formality, like would they need high level information or detailed information, or maybe just graphical is enough, or you need data table also to be presented. So the level of detail will also be recognized by your expected stakeholders or audience itself. Also reporting, uh, on test progress to others in the same team is often frequent and informal while reporting on testing for a completed project follows a set of template and occurs only once. That final line completely justifies that progress reports are done periodically again and again whereas when it comes to the test completion report it's very detailed or has more information than test progress report but is created only once at the end of the project. So far, we understood about how, what are the different types of reports, but now we'll understand what are the ways of communicating these reports to other stakeholders. So of course, when it comes to agile methodology or when it comes to other traditional models, today we are using wide variety of options in order to share our status update or let other people know how exactly are we progressing. And that's where the communication of test report becomes very crucial. So here we are using a blended approach of agile versus traditional to let you answer that what could be the possible ways as of today in the market for a testing team to communicate their status and the set of reports what they may have and that's where we are looking at some of these options so when it comes to the best means of communicating test status they varies depending on the test management concerns organizational test strategies regulatory standards or in the case of self-organizing teams on the team itself that means these are all those factors what we may need to discuss in order to define how exactly the reports will be communicated to the other stakeholders. But we do have some of the very commonly recognized options and the options are verbal communication with team members and other stakeholders which are more of like stand-up calls which we can make use of 
and uh, daily meetups catch ups on different topics or different calls could be called as this option whereas dashboards which includes the ci cd dashboard the task board the burn down chart so if you talk about making use of tools like jira you may certainly have a dashboard of different reports put together or you can have a task board which is more of like a scrum board or kanban board to update your day to day work and also if you talk about the reporting things like burn down chart velocity sprint report etc could be a very 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 well option to communicate your daily progress to the team and next one here is electro electronic communication channels like email and chats or if you talk about things like zoom and teams where we communicate together so even instant messaging like chatting like slack option is a part of this particular segment plus when we come to online documentation we are talking about the wikis wikis in the sense we are talking about things like sharepoint uh, onedrive or even confluence is one of the option under this category plus we do have formal test reports away from all these options if you want you can just draft a ppt presentation and just publish it through an email communication to all your stakeholders and write formal test reports so it's not necessary to use any one of these you can even combine them together to make use of it as a blended approach to be used within your testing life cycle and that's what the point is trying to say the point says here that one or more of these option can be used more formal communication may be more appropriate for distributed teams where direct face to face communication is not always possible due to geographical distribution or time differences typically different stakeholders are interested in different types of information so communication should be tailored accordingly one final thing to talk about that again the stakeholders may vary and depending on their needs we must customize the reports accordingly and we must really look forward to have more formal reports when you are working with distributed team because when you have face to face communication we understand a high level input could also be very easy to understand but when people are not face to face working together the written communication becomes the mode of communication so it should be very crucial to take into account that how exactly you are managing your reports put together that's all what we had from the test monitoring control and completion and the different test reports that's uh hope you have understood all the thing what you really wanted to know that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understand the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning